How's it going everybody? Welcome to episode 17 of the Real GP series. Today we'll be checking out just how much you can actually make at the Dust Devils. Thanks everybody for coming back to check out the most recent installment of the Real GP series. If you haven't done so yet, please give me a follow on Twitter and Instagram. You can see when I release new content as well as see different types of player submitted achievements. If you'd like to submit an achievement, you can do so by sending it to me directly on Instagram or posting it in the achievements channel in my Discord. If you need the invite link to the Discord, please find it below in the description. Additionally, if you're looking for some new bossing teams, please feel free to join my clan chat. If you don't need a bossing team and you're looking for a place to just hang out, it's good for that too. So, Dust Devils. They may or may not be a decent money maker, so in typical real GP fashion, I had to figure it out for myself. Like some of my other videos, I have done a Dust Devil video before, but I only did it on the net value of the loot and not the actual profit. So for this video, I'll obviously be looking to find the real GP per hour of these NPCs. The Dust Devils were introduced to RuneScape on April 18th of 2005 when the Desert Treasure Quest was released. There is two locations in which the Dust Devils can be found. If you have done the Desert Treasure Quest, you will know where this first location is, and even if you haven't, it's way out of the way and most certainly not the best location to be killing these, so I won't be covering it. However, with the introduction of the Catacombs of Karend, Dust Devils became much easier to get to. Once you make your way to the monument in Karend, you will investigate it to enter the catacombs, then take the eastern passageway, head south at the split, and once again turn to your east at the next available passageway and you will have arrived. In the first room, you'll find a decent amount of spawns, and in the more southern room, you'll find many more spawns. Be aware though that the southern room is primarily used for bursting or barraging. If you're meleeing in this room, there is a good chance that you'll get crashed and you will have to move to the northern room or find another world. The Dust Devils are a fairly weak NPC with a combat level of 93 in the Smoke Dungeon and level 110 in the Catacombs. Since this video is mainly focusing on the Dust Devils in the Catacombs, I'll only be talking about the level 110 Dust Devils. These level 110 Dust Devils have an accompanying hit points level of 130, they are not aggressive, their maximum hit is 10, and their weakness is actually magic, but for this video, we'll be using melee. You will also need a Slayer level of 65 or higher to kill the Dust Devils, as well as completed the Desert Treasure Quest up to the point of entering the Smoke Dungeon to be assigned them as a Slayer task. The level 110 Dust Devils have an attack level of 120, strength level of 90, defense level of 40, and a magic and range level of only 1. As for their defensive stats, they have none to speak of for any attack style. Their primary weakness of magic comes from their magic level being 1. As we should know by now, magic defense is calculated by magic level, so with a magic level of 1, there is no magical defense to speak of. Many people choose to burst or barrage the dust devils because of their weakness to magic and very fast slayer experience. Because the dust devils drop table isn't stupendous, bursting will most likely break even and barraging will most likely actually lose you money. But with meleeing, although it is slower, it will turn a profit. As for their drops, they do not have any that are unique to just themselves. Most things on the drop table can be alked and anything that isn't alked will stack. As far as rare drops go, they do drop dragon daggers which are dropped at a rate of 1 in 128, dust battle staffs at a rate of 1 in 4000, and dragon chain bodies at a rate of 1 in 32768. So don't get your hopes up for one of those. When it comes to runes, the Chaos runes are listed as uncommon, but you will find yourself getting them quite often. Soul runes hold true to their uncommon drop rate, but still will bring in a decent chunk of change if you pick them all up. The Dust Devils will also drop grimy herbs and noted mithril and adamant bars. If you'd like to see the Dust Devils drop table for yourselves, please check out the wiki link in the description below. As we move on to the gear setup, I'll mention here that you must be wearing a face mask or slayer helm while killing the dust devils. If you forget this, I'm sure you'll remember very quickly what you forgot while you're on your way back to Lumbridge. So for my setup, I'll be going with the slayer helm, fire cape, amulet of torture, bandos chestplate and tassets, barrow's gloves, primordial boots, and berserker's ring eye. As for my weapon of choice and offhand, I'll go with the abyssal whip and dragon defender. Now because of the Dust Devil's low defense level, almost any higher tier weapon will work here. In addition to this, if you can't afford the gear I'm using, any iteration of lower tier melee gear will do just fine here. 
In my inventory, you will see two supersets, a Ceridoman Godsword, Bones to Peaches tabs, Nature Runes, and a Smoke Battle Staff for High Alchemy, an Herb Sack, a Rune Pouch, and some House Teleports. This might seem like a lot of stuff to go kill some Dust Devils, but with this setup, you can pretty much stay here as long as you want to. Depending on how long you want to stay, just increase or decrease your amount of supersets, and make sure you have enough Bones to Peaches tablets, and you'll be fine. Now unfortunately, the Guthans armor set will not sustain you here as you'd have to remove your Slayer helmet or face mask and most likely take another trip back to Lumbridge, which is why I have my SGS. If you can't afford an SGS, the Bones to Peaches tablets will sustain you just fine. They also drop a special type of kebab, which I can't pronounce, which heal 19 hit points and will also help to increase your trip times. So now we can finally move on to the loot now that I've gotten all the boring crap out of the way. As usual, I spent 25 hours at the Dust Devils for science, and for math, and for imaginary internet points, of course. I managed to rake in 3,211 kills, which averaged me about 128 kills per hour. Over the course of the 25 hours, I ended up grabbing 9,089,754 GP in total loot, and I even managed to grab a Dust Battle Staff at that 1 in 4,000 drop rate. Yay, 17k. <coughs> anyway, as for supplies, the only things you'll use here are supersets, bones to peaches tablets, and nature runes. As for me, my supply costs ended up being 203,930 GP, which gives me a total profit of 8,885,824 GP. Divide this by the 25 hours and I'm left with 355k profit per hour. So, as for my final thoughts, Dust Devils really aren't that bad. I mean, in terms of profit per hour, they're definitely not the greatest, but they're still decent for such a low-level Slayer monster. In terms of XP, I managed to grab about 67,000 attack XP per hour, which definitely isn't too bad for not being on a Slayer task. So I'd say that even if you are going to melee these for your Slayer task, they're still worth doing. And also, if you're a lower level Slayer and might need a quick few hundred thousand GP, spend a couple of hours here and I'm sure you'll see some decent profits. But that is going to wrap up this episode of the Real GP series. Thanks again for checking this video out. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a thumbs up as it really helps the video spread around. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I enjoy reading and responding to them and I'll try to get to every single one that I can. And last but not least, if you haven't done so yet, go ahead and tap that subscribe button for me on your way out. I will see you all next week. Take it easy, everybody.